It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Let's get out of here. I. Hey, everybody. It's Aaron from God a Minute. Is God divorced? What's up with this divorce thing? Before I talk about everything, I wanted to give a, an official good shout out to my bro, Dr. Barry. Uh, um, you know, I get nervous about shout outs because sometimes I'm like, uh, I, if I say something good about one channel, I don't want to leave somebody else out. But I want to just, if you haven't found Dr. Barry Oz's channel, he has been one of the guys that's really inspired me to do what I'm doing. This channel probably would not have existed without Dr. Barry Oz's channel. So I'll put a little picture here in this video at some point. I'm sure most of you are familiar with his channel, but you haven't found his channel. Please uh, check it out. This thought was sort of um, started by Dr. Barry Ah, uh, and um, so I just wanted to build on it. He, he said it very quickly in his most recent video, and uh, I actually didn't even finish the whole video. I was just going for a walk, listening to the video, and um, I'm like, man, this is such an important topic, and he's uh, got so much information that he shares in his channel that I just wanted to just build on that a little bit or just, just restate it. Um, he might not share this opinion, but it, I think it's just cool to, to bring this up. It's very important. So when reading the Bible, um, I'll insert some Bible verses here as I read them, I think. But um, this is what he brought up. Jeremiah 3, verse 8. And what we have is this. Then I saw that for all the cause for which backsliding Israel had committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but went and played the harlot also. So I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Whoa. Just pause. Just think. Just process that. I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. So, um, what does it say in 2 Kings 17? It gives more reason as to why God gave Israel a certificate of divorce. And how do we handle this? What do we think of this? Um, 2 Kings 17, verse 18 in particular, Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah alone. Now, what was um, Israel doing um, to cause them to come to this place? Second Kings 17, if I just kind of paraphrase it, um, they had feared other gods. That's verse 7. Uh, verse 10, uh, they set up for themselves sacred pillars and wooden images. Uh, verse 11 in Second Kings chapter 17, they did wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger, for they served idols. Uh, and then it says in verse 13, Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all of his prophets, every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments. But they didn't. Uh, verse 14, Nevertheless, they would not hear. They stiffened their necks. And 15, They followed idols, became idolaters. So they left all commandments, verse 16, and made for themselves a molded image and two calves. And they worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. And they caused their souls, or their sons and their daughters, to pass through the fire, practice witchcraft and soothsaying, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Therefore, in verse 18, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his sight. So, going back to Jeremiah, verse 3, chapter 3, verse 8. I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce because they committed idolatry. They started to worship other gods. They left their first love. What does it say in Esther 1.19? Uh, Queen Vashti didn't want to come to the king. And so if they there was a gentleman or uh, who, who, who was the person that said it? Uh, if it pleased the king, well, somebody was suggesting what the king should do. I don't know who it is right now, but uh, the point is, in verse 19, if it pleases the king, let a royal decree go out from him and let it be recorded in the laws of the Persians and the Medes so that it will not be altered, that Vashti shall come no more before the king. So in other words, Vashti was 
uh, somewhat divorced here from the king, and the king was representing God in this circumstance. And so we've got that. We also have Isaiah 50, verse 1. Oh, I don't have a bookmarked. Let me just go find it. Isaiah 50, verse 1. And it says, Thus says the Lord, Where is the certificate of your mother's divorce, whom I have put away? That's Isaiah 50, verse 1. Again, where is the certificate of your mother's divorce, whom I have put away? So God issued a certificate of divorce with Israel. What do we do with that? Now what? Now what? I mean, that's incredible. Okay, uh, Romans 7, verse 2. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. Okay, I'm going to read another verse now, and then we'll tie this all together. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. A wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives, but if her husband dies... She is at liberty to be married to whom she wishes only in the Lord. So here we have in the Old Testament, God issues um, a divorce. But in the New Testament, uh, Romans 7 verse 2 and 1 Corinthians 7 verse 39, if the husband dies, she's not bound to the law anymore. And so <laughs> to sum this all up, God, uh, so Israel commits adultery or idolatry, however you want to look at it, and God issues a divorce. God puts himself in the category of, you know how people say, oh, I'm divorced, or oh, this and that, and they, they think it's their identity, and they think it's like a sin to divorce or whatever. But God issued a divorce because of the choice of Israel. And so we got to think of this at a higher ego level situation here. This is a, a really deep thing that we need to understand that what happened here is God issued a divorce, but he, he made a second chance through Christ, right? Because Jesus, the Son of God, who is God, died. And so by Jesus dying on the cross, he overcame the law because the husband died. Right? So I'm going to read Romans 7, verse 2 again. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So because Jesus died, Israel can be restored because he was the husband man. He was the bridegroom. He is the bridegroom. So Jesus died because God, part of the reason why Jesus died was to also restore Israel and to restore us as Gentiles, um, right? So God issues the divorce. That's, a lot, that's really hard for us to hear because we've got this connotation that divorce is a sin. It's wrong. You shouldn't get divorced. God, the most righteous being in the history of existence of this whole thing, issues a divorce. Whoa. Because of the, the rejection of him from idolatry. But then... He also makes a way out through Christ. And so I think this is so critical to understand. And this is it's also important for us when we're reading the scripture. We, we don't do this with, we do this and we, we just see one word because their face is too close to the Bible. And if you do this and you start condemning people who are divorced and, and you're, you're condemning and you, because you're only looking at that one verse and you don't see the bigger picture. And you, you, gotta, you, gotta, go, you gotta go through the whole Bible and you gotta flip through this whole thing you got to understand the heart of God. And so, again, that's why I like Barry, because not only is, does he flip through the scripture, but he understands the heart of God. And you, you cannot understand biblical concepts and, um, and doctrines and stuff like that unless you also have the heart. You understand the heart. You see, we've got a heart right here. We've got a heart right here. Get tight with Christ. It's a relationship with Jesus. It's not um, a bunch of rules that you got to follow Okay, it's 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 engaging with the heart of Christ. You're not going to come to full knowledge without the heart of Christ. God did he doesn't like divorce, but he knows that there comes a time when that sometimes has to happen. And here's here's the big thing, okay? 
divorce is is a, is a is a separation. It's it's it, right, and so the reason why he gave us marriage was to help us understand our eternal destination. At some point, there's going to be an eternal divorce if you're not in Christ. You will not be restored without understanding that Jesus died for your sins. And there will be an issue to you. If you are not in Christ, there will be a divorce, a permanent, eternal divorce. Well, you will never see the face of God for eternity or all your loved ones for eternity if you choose to go in the opposite direction of Christ. If you reject the free gift of salvation, you will be eternally divorced forever. That's a scary place to be. I do not want you to be eternally divorced. God did it once, but he gave us a second chance through Christ. But that this is the last chance. There's no other bus that's coming after Christ. This is the last one that's leaving the station. Christ, Jesus, came in the order of Melchizedek. You can read about that in Hebrews. He's the high priest forever. His blood saves. That's it. That's all. And your identity is found in him. Right there. And like I shared to you before with the Hebrew letters, um, when you when there's always a mention of the word wife, it's uh, there's a vavs and aleph and a tav and a shin. So you you become hidden in Christ when you say I do to Christ. Okay, and so I do not want you to be eternally divorced from God if you reject Him. Don't reject God. Don't reject His Son. This is the last bus in terms of the salvation train, okay? It's the last salvation bus. Get tight with Christ. Grow in his word. Get full understanding. When you study, study with the heart, and you're going to understand some basic concepts. If you read something in the Bible and you don't get it, go, go from like shoving your face onto the one verse and the one just go a lot broader and go... Try and see the bigger picture. Try and see the bigger picture. What is God trying to tell us? Why did Jesus come? What's the bigger picture? Go to the old. Go to the new. Go to the Hebrew. Go to the Greek. Go to the different translations. And, and then eventually, if you seek him with all your heart, with all your heart, he's going to reveal himself. He might not reveal it to you in one day. I mean, actually, we it's guaranteed he's not going to. But he will. He has a heart for you. And he sent the son for you. Do you accept? It's up to you. Love you. See you in the clouds, hopefully, very soon. Go, Jesus, go. Hallelujah, I'll see you.